Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so. I now own a 1999 Toyota Camry. It's a car, I guess. I'm currently using this car as my feeder slash daily. It has AC, so it's great for that in the summer and everything like that. It currently has about 200,000 miles on it. 199, 240 something right now to say exactly, but almost 200,000 miles, so basically 200,000 miles, you know what I'm saying? I got this car in a trade. I traded my old Aerostar for this car plus 1200 bucks, so certainly cannot complain. It was pretty cheap, that is for sure, especially since the Aerostar had some head gasket issues, and this is a perfectly fine working car. Knock on metal though, because it's got 200,000 miles and it definitely was not properly cared for for those last 200,000 miles, that is for sure, you know what I'm saying? But certainly no complaints on my behalf either way. But now that I've given you guys a little bit of an overview as to what this car is, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start showing you guys around the outside of the car, all of the cosmetic defects and everything like that, which there are a lot of. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a tour of the inside of the car. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and take it for a drive and let you guys know how a Toyota Camry with 200,000 miles actually drives and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Insane. But I do think without further ado, let's just go ahead and start taking a look at the outside of the car. As we can see, it's a very, very nice, beautiful, dark forest green color, which I do much quite like, I will admit. It's just got hubcaps and everything like that. No hubcaps on the front though, just hubcaps on the back because I took the hubcaps off the front and everything like that. I don't really like how hubcaps look. This one was coming off kind of thing. So I just, I was like, you know what, before I lose it, I'll just go ahead and take it off, shove it under my porch, just in case I ever decide to sell the car or anything like that kind of thing. I can just put the hubcaps back on and everything like that. We can just see the front of the car right here. It's not in the greatest condition in the world. I had to replace both of the turn signal lights when I first got this car because both of them on both sides were smashed don't ask me how that happened with this side. I know how it happened with that side, but we'll get to that in a minute. I don't know how this side got smashed though. No clue, absolutely no clue. I assume, I don't know, wanna change the bulb. You don't know how to change the bulb, just smash it, you change the bulb like that. I have no clue, wouldn't pass inspection like that though. So I just went ahead and put in a new light and everything like that though. Thankfully, the headlights themselves were all good and everything like that. But we can see the hood right here. Rust, 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 bird shit, rust, 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 rust. It's definitely not the greatest condition in the world. You can tell this has been parked under a tree before, that is for sure. And we can just see right here the bumper. You can see the styrofoam. The styrofoam is all exposed, mainly just because, well, the previous owner said that she was sitting at a light and that the, uh, the, the person in front of her was backing up and they had a hitch and just boom, right in there just like that. She said there was no other damage other than that, but there is indeed a brand new radiator or so it looks like. So I'd assume there was a little bit more damage than that, but hey, I don't really care. It's a Camry of 200,000 miles. Of course, got the gold badges. Don't fucking baller. I've always wanted a Toyota with gold badges in all honesty. And it's got the gold badges, so I certainly cannot complain. I love the gold badging. I just think it looks so good and definitely just makes this car just look a little bit more distinct than it would just with the normal silver badging and everything like that, that is for sure. Stuck a, a front license plate on it, just zip tied it on and everything like that. From my Aerostar, I had this license plate on my Aerostar and since I traded this car or my Aerostar for this car, I wanted to just go ahead and have a little bit of a remembrance of the Aerostar, which is why I put this on this car, you know what I'm saying? But as said though, I was gonna talk a little bit about why this side was smashed. So if we just wanna move a little bit this way, we can see some damage. So how did this happen? This was not me, this was the previous owner. And the previous owner said, and I quote, I ran off the road and hit a light pole. So she hit a light pole, she messed up the front strut bar, which has now been replaced, but the car still drives at an angle kind of thing. I have to drive it at about that angle every single time when I wanna actually go straight and everything like that. And you can definitely tell that the tires do not wear evenly. This tire is new though, because the other tire in it had chunks taken out. I was trying to get it inspected. Wouldn't pass inspection because of that when in fact I actually didn't need to get inspected, but they didn't tell me that. But moving on to this side right here, if we just wanna look under here, we can see this does not wear evenly at all. I have not gotten my tires rotated. This is the original tire on this side. It does not wear evenly at all. I definitely need to get my tires rotated, but that certainly is what it is. And we could just see a bunch of other dents, scratches, shit like that, but 
I don't care about my I don't care about my car. I don't care about this car at all. I care a lot more about my Suburban than this car. That, that is for sure. But uh, this is basically my beater car, so I don't care about it. I absolutely just do not care about it. And there's a bunch of stuff just hanging down here as well. I gotta zip tie that in and everything like that. This is just hanging down. Scrapes on everything I hit. But that's pretty much all there is to the front of the car. Moving on to the side of the car right here, we can see there's some dents on the mirror and stuff like that. The mirror, this side, it's electric. It surprisingly works. The driver's side does not work though. But because this is all dented in and everything like that, it's all dented in, there's no fixing it. I'm just gonna have to get a new fender and everything like that, which I do plan to do, just to make it look a little bit more pretty. But the door, that's as far as it opens. This is as far as it opens. It does not open very far at all, as you guys can see. I mean, like, you can get in it, but it's certainly not easy, that is for sure. And also, this is hanging down. The weather stripping definitely needs to be replaced. Thankfully, though, this door works just fine. We can see a little bit of rust here. This is actually the only bit of rust on this car. Don't get me wrong. The bottom of the car is definitely a lot worse than my Suburban. My Suburban is surprisingly clean. This is a lot worse. It has 200,000 miles on it. It was previously owned by three teenagers. They obviously did not care about this car, nor do I. So there's a bunch of rust on the car and everything like that. And I really don't care in all honesty. Hubcaps on this wheel, I don't care. Missing the cap, I don't care. Uh, moving on to the back though. We can see more gold badging. It's the best ever. And the previous owner put on a bunch of bumper stickers and everything like that. Only three bumper stickers are mine. I typically don't put bumper stickers on my car, but I figured it's already got bumper stickers. Why not? If I'm going to put stickers on my car, I want to make sure I maintain that resale value and everything like that kind of thing. So I just put them on the glass, but there are already bumper stickers on here. So I really don't care. I put on this bumper sticker, this bumper sticker, and this bumper sticker right here. The rest of them though, I will admit they're pretty nice bumper stickers. They're not like political bumper stickers or anything annoying like that kind of thing. We just got, what is this? This is a Keith Haring bumper sticker. Rest in pieces, Richmond, Virginia, rewind your mind, which is like a, a movie theater around uh, where I live and everything like that. And we've just got like a vintage shop, uh, some band stuff, Prodigy. I've never listened to them. I've heard of them though. Uh, reading is sexy, but now it's just ing it sexy. Uh, cutting the fence, I don't know what that is. And then suicide hotline prevention sticker. I respect that. I like seeing that, you know what I'm saying? Don't commit suicide. And the back of the car, when I first got this, this light right here was smashed. So I had to go to uh, the junkyard and get another light. And I would just replace this one right here. Super easy though. Really not an issue at all. No complaints on my behalf. I honestly, don't know how this light got smashed either because there's there's really no damage over here i mean like don't get me wrong the bumper is, is cracked it's definitely not in the best shape in the world kind of thing but how and my only guess that i can really think as to why this was broken was because the previous owner didn't know how to get the light out and everything like that on the inside so if i had to guess to change the light bulb they just smashed it and then changed the light bulb which doesn't really matter you're not going to pass inspection anyway and cops can pull you over for that don't ask me it was owned by three teenagers before me so i don't really care in all honesty kind of thing we can just move it on to the side right here we can just see some more uh stickers and everything like that kind of thing this one's pretty much faded and everything like that don't really care though it's just a sticker and we're pretty much back on the same side as we were previously on so i do think without further ado i'm just going to go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys which, uh, what's under the hood and everything like that this car has a 6.5 liter V8. No, I'm just kidding. It's got like a, I think it's like a 2.5 liter four cylinder, 120 horsepower, not fast at all. So let's just go. Did you mention how you got this car? Uh, I traded my Aerostar for it, right? Yeah. I think I mentioned that right at the beginning. Although, honestly, I cannot remember. But yeah, no, I traded my old Aerostar with head gasket issues for this car. Thank you for mentioning that. I do appreciate it. But I traded this car for my Aerostar, which had head gasket issues. And uh, I got 1200 bucks plus this car for the Aerostar, and for a car with head gasket issues, a pretty good deal. So certainly no complaints on my behalf. The engine bay though, it's not really much to speak of. Stock, alternator, core. It's not really a lot of exposed wiring like with the Suburban, so I gotta give it some credit. Battery looks decently old, probably, I don't know. Uh, I'm low on coolant right now. I should probably replace that, but I'm not going to take off the cap right now because I don't feel like dealing with first degree burns. And it's it's like a 2.5 liter in inline four. I, I really have not much else to say about it. Runs pretty decently. 
not really too many issues, but I'll get to that in a little bit once we move on to the inside, because there are some issues, just not really with the engine or anything like that. Got the oil changed a while back, so just keeping it fresh kind of thing, but this is my beater. I don't really care about actually maintaining it and everything like that kind of thing. Basically, my only goal with this car is to literally just keep it on the road. If I can keep this car on the road, I'm winning in my personal opinion, because it's essentially like a two, three thousand dollar car kind of thing. My Aerostar, if I had just junked it kind of thing, or basically anybody else if they had wanted to buy it, would have probably bought it for like 700 bucks or less kind of thing, because it still ran, don't get me wrong, but it had a head gasket issue, so I'd say I came off pretty good, you know what I'm saying? So certainly no complaints might be half, and it's just an engine. I don't really care to keep it looking pretty. As long as it's running, I am happy, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying. But I'm just gonna go ahead and close the engine. There's really not anything else to talk about. Oh yeah, as I said, this radiator looks really new. I don't know if it's actually new, but it looks really, really new in my personal opinion. So I think definitely there's a bit more damage than what the previous owner was saying when I uh, when I was asking about it and everything like that. But just go ahead and close that real quick. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and move on to, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and sit in the back and just show you guys how much room there is actually in the back of this car and everything like that. Because in all honesty, the leg space back here with where the seat is, because of course this is the driver's side, so I have it set up how I would normally sit and everything like that. But really, there, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's not great either, don't get me wrong. It's easy to get in and out. It certainly would not be the most comfortable thing on road trips, don't get me wrong, but I mean like, hey, it's not so bad. I'm six foot one and this is pretty good. If I was like six foot four, six foot five kind of thing, this would be a lot worse. But it's not terrible in all honesty. And if I was six foot four, six foot five, I don't even know if I'd fit in this car in all honesty. But I'm just gonna go and hop out real quick. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show y'all the front of the car and everything like that. So we can just take a look at the front of the car. The wheel is straight right now because I straightened it up before I parked. But trust me, it does not drive like that normally. Just got some water bottles, my lunchbox over there. It's an automatic, of course. I think it's a five-speed automatic, if I remember correctly. Uh, this driver's side mirror right here does not work. Uh, I have to adjust it by hand, even though it's supposed to be electric, as we can see right here. AC blows cold. I love it. And uh, there's really not much else to say about the interior, in all honesty. The rest of the interior, I think I want to cover when I actually start up the car and everything like that, because there are certainly some quirks and features about this car that you would have not had when it was new, that is for sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop the trunk real quick and just show you guys how big the trunk is, because in all honesty, it's not bad. It's really not a bad sized trunk at all. And actually, when I first popped open the trunk, when I was taking a look at this car kind of thing, I was actually really impressed. And as you guys can tell, I have about probably a four foot long canvas in here. It won't fit like lengthways kind of, or it won't fit long ways, but it'll definitely fit like lengthways like this kind of thing. And it's honestly a pretty good size. I have a full size jack back here, spare gas can, just all of my just random stuff to just make sure, hey, if I have any issues or anything like that kind of thing, like extra oil, uh, tire pump and everything like that just a shovel in case I get stuck or something like that band-aids always a good idea spare water bottles and everything drawing pads and everything like that I forgot to take this inside yesterday I meant to do that but I completely forgot and we could just see the rear of the trunk like this is falling out kind of thing from where I did that it's never really went in properly again uh, this side same thing it's it's not really in the greatest shape in the world but it certainly is what it is I'm gonna go ahead and actually get the car started up real quick because there is one thing about the back of this car that is supposed to work but doesn't work so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because there is an issue with this generation of Camry where the back taillight uh, wires get caught in the trunk. That did indeed happen with this car. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and start it up real quick, turn on the lights and go ahead and show y'all. And as you guys are gonna be able to hear, this car sounds mean. This car sounds mean. Uh, it's got an exhaust leak. So we can see right here, the taillights are on. These are supposed to work as well. The reverse lights work just fine. These are supposed to work as well though, and these do not work because those wires got caught in the trunk and everything like that. I don't care in all honesty. Supposedly, I won't pass inspection because of it, but in all honesty, I'll just keep going to different inspection places until they don't care. That's pretty much what I'm gonna do. As we can see under here, we have the exhaust, and if we just look under there, we can see the exhaust pipe is completely disconnected from the muffler. So there is still, if I put my hand right here, there is still exhaust coming through the muffler, but you can definitely hear the difference, that is for sure. And I think the rest of what I want to cover with this car is all on the inside. So I think we might just want to go ahead and hop in just so I can go ahead and show you guys the rest of the quirks and features about this car and everything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop in the driver's side. Would you like to hop in the passenger side? Yes, sir. Sounds good, sounds good. 
Alrighty, ignore any trash or anything like that kind of thing. I cleaned out this car yesterday, but I've already got water bottles in it. So, as we can notice right here, the radio screen does not turn on. Even though the car is on, the radio screen does not turn on. That is because this, this radio used to work. But about a month after I bought this car, or I traded my old car for this car, I started getting smoke in the inside of the car. And I was like, what's going on kind of thing? There's smoke coming. I thought it was coming through the vents at first. I was like, oh my goodness, I need to pull over and stop. Turned off the car, smoke went away. I was like, okay, cool. There's no fire. And there's exposed wires down here. All of these are for the radio. Well, it's, just, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. But there's exposed wires down here and everything like that kind of thing. It's really not the greatest thing in the world. All of those are for the radio. And what I ended up finding out is that it wasn't actually coming through the vents or anything like that. It was actually the radio overheating these wires over here. So there's some sort of short circuit in the radio. And it basically started trying to catch my carpet on fire. That's basically what happened. I don't know if we can actually see it down there. Yeah, right here. It started burning right there and everything like that, which definitely was not very fun. That caused a bunch of smoke and made me think my car was catching on fire and everything like that. Definitely not the greatest thing in the world, that is for sure, but it certainly is what it is. If we just look right here as well, we can just see the panel right there. It's just completely falling apart. It certainly is what it is though, that is for sure. And the windows are all electric, which is great. I really like that though. The windows in the front, they all work. All of the windows work. This window right here though, so normally with a window switch, you press down goes down, press up, goes up. Not with this window in the back. You press up, goes down. Press down, goes up. Still works, don't know why it'd be like that, but it certainly do nonetheless, that is for sure. But I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show about the inside of the car. The inside of the car, it's just pretty basic. It doesn't work or nothing like that. I gotta replace that. Mirrors work just fine. They don't light up, just base model. Got my little tree, of course. And uh, yeah, that's missing the screen and everything like that. Who cares? It's a beater car. I don't care, that's for sure. I'm just thankful the AC works and I'm thankful it runs, that is for sure. But I do think without further ado, oh, and the lights in the front, of course I got my check engine light on, of course. Uh, ABS and cruise, ABS and cruise both work. The lights are flashing, don't know why, but they are nonetheless. But I do think without further ado, I think it's probably time to go ahead and take it for a drive. Do you think I'm forgetting to mention anything? I don't think so. All right, big bet, big bet. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get my wallet out of my pocket so I can drive properly and go ahead and take this for a drive. Oh, I did forget to mention one thing. My ashtray. I've been using the ashtray and it works great. The ashtray works great. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. I love cars with ashtrays and sadly no new cars have ashtrays and I'm certainly thankful that this one does have an ashtray, you know what I'm saying? But I do think without further ado, let's go ahead and take it on a drive and let's go ahead and see how a 1999 Camry with 200,000 miles actually, well, drives, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So as you guys uh, can hear, I'm sure, this car doesn't need to have an exhaust like you guys said and I'm just gonna go ahead and start whipping it. There we go. I'm just think I'm just gonna go ahead. I think I'm gonna go probably out the same exit I went with the Suburban and everything like that. Just take a little bit of a different way. And this is pretty much how I drive my car all the time. Uh, Cause honestly, I, I don't care about this car. I really don't. I don't care about gunning it everywhere. I really could not care less. And as you guys can tell as well, I am indeed having to steer this car to go straight. I have to steer it at an angle, at this angle specifically, which definitely is not exactly the stock angle, that is for sure, but it's an angle nonetheless, and it's an angle that does still work. I'm just glad the steering wheel isn't upside down. That would be a little bit confusing, but this angle is not so bad, you know what I'm saying? It's a car I got for cheap. It's a car that runs, and as such, I don't really care. It eats tires, don't get me wrong from what I can tell, but it, it really is what it is. It really is what it is. And for a car that has AC, it gets better gas mileage than my Suburban because this car gets about 22 city, 25, 26, 27 highway, which is higher than EPA rated in all honesty, but honestly as well, I do tend to go about 70, 75, and that's when I get that MPG. And I'm pretty sure the EPA only rates at about 65. Uh, that was the exhaust scraper right there. So I'm pretty sure I get slightly better gas mileage than the EPA actually rates, but certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. Uh, it's, it's overall good. I get about, typically, depending on my driving style for the tank of gas and everything like that, I'm at a half a tank right now and I've got 200, 200 miles on the tank, which is pretty good. And I definitely have to say, typically speaking at least, I get about 350, 450 miles per tank, depending on my driving style, if it's all highway. I get about 425, 450 kind of thing, which is really good. If it's all city, I get about 350 kind of thing. If it's a combo, I get about 400. So certainly no complaints on my behalf, this for sure. I'm just gonna go ahead and just gun it real quick. Floor it. Almost five and a half thousand RPM. Five and a half thousand RPM. I actually know how much RPM because this car actually has a tachometer that does indeed work. Uh, but yeah, it sounds a lot better 
better than it would if the muffler was actually doing its job. So I'm not complaining about that either. I know supposedly it won't pass emissions with the exhaust like this and stuff like that kind of thing, or it won't pass, it doesn't need to pass emissions. It won't pass inspection with the exhaust like this and everything like that. I don't need to worry about that, about that this year though. I'll just get it welded up next year, but until then, I'm keeping the exhaust like it is, because honestly, I, I like it sounding just a little bit heavier and everything like that kind of thing when I'm on the highway. It is honestly nice to just have that drone in the background, especially since the radio don't work anymore, because to make sure, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the radio, but to basically make the radio not catch my entire car on fire, I just had to, uh, I, I just unplugged the uh, radio fuse. That fixed all of my issues. So certainly cannot complain, that is for sure. Uh, it just fixed all my issues and everything like that kind of thing, but basically this car just drives how it, you would expect a 90s Camry to drive in all honesty kind of thing. We go a little slow out with this. Don't feel like breaking the car, even though it is my beater car, even though I don't care about it. I still don't want to break it. Uh, it is my daily driver after all, and it's one of two cars that I own. If I really didn't care about this car, I would have tried to get some uh, air off of that, but I'm definitely not trying to do that, that is for sure. Let's go ahead and take a turn right here. It just rained as well, so I'm trying to make sure I don't take any corners as heavy as I would normally take them, that is for sure as well. But overall though, I mean like, it drives essentially as you would expect a, a 90s sort of Camry too. The steering is less vague than you might expect though. It's certainly not fun by any means. It's certainly not super heavy steering, you can drive it with one hand kind of thing. It's really not super difficult, but it's kind of vague. It's definitely not a sports car, but honestly, it's more fun than you would expect. And I feel like a lot of the fun factor from this car really just comes from me not caring about it one bit. I don't care about how I drive this car. I floor it whenever the hell I want. My only care about this car is really gas mileage because I just don't want to burn through too much gas. And that's really why I don't floor it everywhere. But if I feel like flooring it, I do, unlike with the Suburban, because I just want to maintain it a little bit better. But it's pretty fun. I feel like I said mainly just because, and it's just... I don't even have to touch the steering wheel. It's just going around this curve perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, the, the alignment is definitely not great. I'm The road is curving right now, and the car is pretty much perfect for this curve with me not touching the steering wheel and everything like that. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, but because of the fact that I don't care about this car at all, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. That is for sure. And I definitely have to say it's a lot more fun than um, a car that you care a lot about. I've driven cars that I care a lot about before, and it's fun, don't get me wrong. It's cool to own a car that you really like, that you really enjoy, that you really don't want to hurt. But it's also really fun to own a car that you really don't care about at all kind of thing. Because you don't care about it. You can do this whenever you want. And it's so nice in all honesty. It's so nice. The power, it's slow. It's got 120 horsepower. Going onto the highway, you really want to turn off the AC before you, if especially if you kind of merge a little bit quickly kind of thing. You definitely want to turn off the AC beforehand. I'm just going to go ahead and go. You definitely want to turn off the AC beforehand. I don't know if that really does anything, but it feels faster when there's no AC on. It's a 90s four banger. It's kind of what you'd expect in all honesty. It's slow. It's a little bit fun to drive, but mainly just because I don't care about it. It would not be fun to drive if I actually cared about this car. I've heard Camry V6s are fast. I don't know. Never driven one. Um, behind us are probably wondering what the hell we're doing, but I don't care. Gotta be flexing on them. I got a car I don't care about, so I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want. And, um, yeah. And I'm not actually kidding. When I go through roundabouts and stuff, I, I will do that sometimes, but I just don't feel like going through the roundabout. I'll just go ahead and turn, stop for that stop. I, yes, legally speaking, I stopped for that stop sign. Most certainly, I definitely did not blow through that stop sign. And I'm just gonna take it up to 25 and then go, because there's, there's, there's cops that like to sit around here, so. I am by no means going to be speeding, especially since there's pedestrians and whatnot in the road. I'm not gonna be speeding right here. Cops like to come through here and uh, everything like that. So definitely don't feel like, I'm just gonna wait for this car right here. Let's see. There we go, perfect. No complaints on my behalf. Just had to wait for that car. Don't feel like getting in a crash. While I don't care about this car, I do still want it to run. And now there's a car backing up. All right. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. I had a stop sign to hit. So it is what it is. All of my gauge lights work and everything like that. No no complaints on my behalf. When I first got this car, 
uh, the previous owner said, yeah, no, the, the lights for this don't work. And I was like, all right, maybe that's indicative of like an electrical issue. That's going to be fun to deal with in the future. But I was like, you know what, whatever. It's, it's better than having a car with a head gasket issue. That's for sure. And I, I, I turned this little knob right here. They all turned on. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> there's no electrical issue with this, at least. The, the rear lights, yeah, sure, there's an electrical issue. But not with the gauge lights, thankfully. Those all work perfectly fine. Let's just hit this puddle real quick. Perfect. And uh, thankfully, no issue with that or anything like that kind of thing. Just had to turn the knob, and I, I do suppose she might have not known, known, known that she had to turn the knob. No hit on her, just didn't know kind of thing. But uh, yeah, no complaints on my behalf. And overall, I really enjoy driving this car. I really do enjoy owning this car. I really do enjoy driving this car. By, it, this is by no means a dream car. This is by no means a car I care about, obviously. I was kicking the hell out of it earlier in this video. But it's a car I enjoy owning kind of thing. Not really because of any reason I've, I've previously enjoyed owning a car before. All of the reasons I've enjoyed owning a car before have usually been just because it's a car I really like, kind of thing. It's a car I've wanted. Like my first car ever was a Crown Vic. I enjoyed owning it because it was a Crown Vic. I've always liked Crown Vics. I think owning an ex-cop car as a P71 is really cool. This is a 90s camera. It's good gas mileage. It's slow. I don't care. That's the thing, though. I don't care. I really enjoyed my Vic because it was a Vic. But I cared a lot about it. And, of course, it got in a crash. Um, I, don't, I don't care about this car at all, though. And, and honestly, it's more fun to drive than my Vic. And I hate to say that because my, my Vic was really fun to drive. I also only had it for a month, though, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But this is really fun to drive because I don't care about it. I hit potholes. I floor it. I don't care. And it's just so much fun to drive because of that, it's just simply because I don't care about it at all. It really is just very nice to have a feeder car that I, I just genuinely do not care about. Although I will admit that's a pothole I don't want to hit right there because I'm pretty sure if I hit that pothole, it would probably make my tire go a little bit flat or something like that. Definitely don't want to be doing that. Tires are expensive. And while I may not care about the car particularly much, I definitely do care about not spending any money on it. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying not to hit too many potholes, that is for sure. Now, windshield wipers, they work, they work okay. Can't complain, that is for sure. And uh, overall, yeah, it's, it's got okay low-down torque and everything like that. Just go and turn overdrive off. Actually, it's a little bit quicker with overdrive off. I haven't really messed with that too much, but it definitely is just a little bit quicker, like 30 to 45 uh, with overdrive off and everything like that. As you just get higher revs and everything like that. It makes sense, shifts faster, etc. It's the sport mode or whatever, I don't know. But fun car because I don't care about it, but it's a, it's a good car. It's a 99 Toyota Camry. It's got 200,000 miles on it. And as long as I continue doing oil changes, make sure transmission fluid flushes and everything like that kind of thing, knock on, uh, knock on plastic, but I hope, I hope to get another 50,000, 75,000 miles out of it. Unless I sell it before then. If I sell it before then, then it is what it is. I really don't care. I'm planning on making this car look cosmetically better. I'm planning on changing out the front bumper and the side with the, that had the wreck on and everything like that kind of thing, just to make it look a little bit better. See if I can get it detailed. And if I feel like uh, selling it, uh, then hopefully I can get, I don't know, like three grand for it or something like that kind of thing. That would be kind of the hope in all honesty. But I, I, in this market, in this market, honestly, I'm like, it's a Camry. So honestly, I can get some money for it at least. It's not a $500 car, that is for sure. Maybe a couple years ago, this would have been a $500 car, but certainly not anymore these days. Just a running car these days is like two grand flat, no lower. And that's for like an old Ford Fusion or something kind of thing. It's a Ford Fusion. There's a Camry on the other hand. So I'm thinking three, three grand if I decided to sell this, which honestly, in my first opinion, sounds pretty good. But I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this car. So I'm pretty much that I'm pretty sure that that's all that I wanted to say during this about this car during the car talk. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the car real quick and just go ahead and finish off the video right there. You know what I'm saying? Gee. But yeah, this has been a tour of my 1999 Toyota Camry with 200,000 miles on it. It's a car, I guess. It's it's a car. I don't care about it. It's a car. It's my beater car that has a that ha has that has AC. It's got 200,000 miles. Certainly don't look pretty. That is for sure. But I plan on trying to make it look just a little bit more pretty in the future. See if I can fix the alignment issue. 
I smell something coming off of it. it might be the brakes because I was flooring it and then I was braking and then I was flooring it and then I was braking. So it might be the brakes. It might be oil. Who knows? I should probably check the oil in a couple days after this or just right after this in all honesty because I'm pretty sure this might burn oil as well. I don't care though. Just gotta check the oil, make sure the fluids are all topped up and everything like that and make sure it don't die. That's all I gotta do, you know what I'm saying? My feeder car, don't care about it. Don't care about it looking pretty. It's gonna make it look pretty but just in case I ever decide to sell it. But I do think about food, I think that's just about everything I wanted to say. Make sure to let me know in the comments down below what y'all's thoughts are on my 1999 Toyota Camry. Would this be a beater for you or would this be your dream car? I'm guessing most of y'all, it's probably the first answer. But thank you very much as well to the guy filming. It's my friend Brandon filming once again. I'll put his Instagram right there. It's uh, at dot kid shaggy. I want it kid dot shaggy, not at dot kid shaggy, kid dot shaggy on Instagram. I'll put that on the screen right now. Go check him out, you know what I'm saying? Great at filming. And um, yeah, this is my car. Can't complain. Can't complain, that's for sure. I think that's just about all I wanted to say though. I talked about my future plans to make it look just a little bit more pretty and everything like that. So I do think without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right here. Well, thank you very much y'all for watching my tour of, well, my 1999 Toyota Camry, my beater with 200,000 miles on it. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. And if you guys have enjoyed watching this video, of course, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, and my other channel all in the description down below. Go check them all out, you know what I'm saying? And until the next one, y'all, stay safe and peace. Now, great one. Yes, sir, yes, sir, and I'm saying, I'm saying.